Okay, so quickly today we're going to go through all the transformations and we're going to focus specifically on translation. So this is meant to be a quick review of each of the different types. We'll focus on each different type, um, one a day basically, well, a couple per day. So first of all, the transformation list is here. You should know all of these already. There are four different types. We have translations, reflections, rotations, and dilation. I'm sure you've probably heard from this slide, split slides, and shrinking, and uh, I can't remember what people call the dilation one. But um, we already use these names, translation, reflection, rotation, and dilation. So quickly, an overview of those. For a translation, every point is moved in the exact same direction the exact same amount of time, same number of points. So, so wherever I move, if, if it's going to go four to the left, it's going four to the left for everybody, and up to, it's going up to for every single point. That is a translation. A reflection splits the figure over a line of symmetry. In the case I'm going to show you right here, this is flipping over the um, y-axis, but it can also flip over the x-axis or um, any other line, really, and we'll explore that when we get into reflection. Okay. Then we have rotation. So rotation is a single spin on a point. I don't know if that work, but it looks like this. It rotates around. Okay, and I have it rotating around the point down here at the bottom. So I can really rotate around any point. And then finally, a dilation is either an enlargement or a reduction in size. So in this case, it's an enlargement, or I can shrink it and make it a reduction. So it can represent both larger or smaller. Okay, so those are the four types. We are going to focus um, on translations today. Before we do that, there's some um, verbiage that you need to be familiar with, some vocabulary. First thing is pre-image and image. So pre-image, just like the prefix pre sounds like, means it's before we've done anything. This is the original, before we've done anything. Notice how we labeled our points. We have A, B, and C. The image is after we've done sort of some translation. So this is afterwards. So if you look at the points named in this figure, we have A prime, B prime, and C prime. The primes indicate that it's related, <coughs> excuse me, to the original point, but it's been changed somehow. Okay, so A prime is just that little tick mark, so it's just an A, almost like with an apostrophe up there. Okay, that's A prime, and then we have B prime and C prime. So B prime is related back to the original B. C prime is related back to the original C. Next couple of ter terms I want you to be familiar with are rigid transformations. So we have three types of rigid transformations. They are translations, rotations, and reflections. What that basically means is your pre-image and your image are congruent figures. Remember how we talked about congruent polygons earlier this, this year? Well, the pre-image and the image have to be congruent, meaning all corresponding sides and all corresponding angles are congruent. With a dilation, if you think back about dilation, We'll, we'll soon learn that the angles are actually going to all remain the same. So it actually has three sets of corresponding congruent angles, but the sides obviously are not the same length. Okay, so it's a rigid transformation. That means we have congruent figures. Uh, and I talked about this a little bit. Um, we talked about the rigid transformation. It says that the image is congruent to the original figure. The process is called a rigid transformation, or sometimes called an isometry. Uh, a lot of times you hear it as a rigid transformation. Okay, and then the dilation is called a non-rigid transformation. Again, we're very creative in math when we say things like that, like rigid and non-rigid, adjacent, non-adjacent. Right. So let's move on to translations. Let's move on to translations. So translations, as you know, is just a slide. It's just moving up, down, left, and right. This ordered pair rule right here is one of the more typical ways of showing and describing how an, a pre-image is being changed. 
lots of books have lots of different ways. This seems to be the most consistent. So this is the method we're going to go with. And this is what the state test tends to use as well. So this part here, the xy, this is the tree image. It says, take your pre-image, this arrow here, when you read it, read map 2, and then this last part here is the image. So it tells you how it's going to change. And so in this page here, it's telling us to take the original x and add some value to it. Or take the original y and add some value to it. Okay, so it's telling you how it's shifting up and down and left and right. So let's think about these examples down here. So given the ordered pair rule, provide the transform coordinate point. So it says x, y, max 2, x plus 2, y minus 3. So it's taking all of our x coordinates and adding 2 to it. When I have a whole list of these I have to do, I kind of like to do just the x's and then just the y. So I'm going to start with just the x's. Okay, so my original point was negative 5. If I add 2, it's going to become negative 3. The second one, I have negative 3. If I add 2, it becomes negative 1. The last one here, if I have 6, if I add 2, it becomes 8. Okay, now, we need to do the same thing with the y, but our y tell us to subtract 3. So you take a minute here and go ahead and find your y coordinate. Alright, so each of these we're subtracting 3. So 2 minus 3 would give me a negative 1. Negative 7 minus 3 gives me a negative 10. And 9 minus 3 gives me 6. Okay, so again, this is my free image. And this is the image. Alright, so now, to practice this, and this is a little worksheet, um, we're going to do what I call playing card transformation. Okay, so you're going to pair up in a few minutes here. You're going to pair up, you're going to take a deck of cards, and we're going to pull out the aces and the t two through five cards. So ace, two, three, four, and five. Those are the only cards you're going to need. All the other cards can be put back in the box. All right, then you're going to use those cards, and they're going to describe a translation. Okay, so you can shuffle them up a little bit. Okay, you're going to flip over one card. The first card will represent the change in X. Okay, the first card is the change in X. Okay, the second card is going to be a change in the Y. Okay, so the first card is going to represent a change in X. The second card is going to represent a change in Y. Aces are going to represent 1. A red card is negative and a blue card is card. Sorry, the black card is positive. So here's an example. Here's an example of what you're going to do for each of your problems. So first you're going to start by plotting your pre-image. So I have the point A is negative 3, 1. B is negative 1, 2. And C is 2, negative 3. Alright, so there is my pre-image. Okay, I flip my two cards, and I have a black 5, and I have a red 8. So that tells me my x, y, our translation now, x, y is going to map to, my x, is, this is the x one, it's going to change by 5, positive 5. So x plus 5, my y coordinate is going to change by negative 1. So this is my y, this is going to be negative 1. So this will be y minus 1. So there's my translation map. X, Y map to X plus 5, Y minus 1. So once you get your cards, it's going to be different for every pair. So my new coordinates, my new coordinates, let's think about what A prime, B prime, and C prime are going to look like. Okay, so I have to add 5 to my A. So if I add 5 to my A, I get a positive 2. If I add 5 to my B, I get a 4. 
I have five to two. I get seven. Okay, now let's go through and do the y's. The y's say I need to subtract one. So take my y coordinates. One minus one is zero. Two minus one is one. And negative three minus one is negative four. Okay, so there are my image coordinates. And I'm going to plot those points. So I'm going to go to zero. There's A prime. B prime is going to be four, one. And then C prime is going to be 7, negative 4. Okay, so there are my three points. Notice those figures do look um, fairly congruent if you ignore my terrible drawing. But um, make sure you have it labeled A, B, and C for your free image. And you have A prime, B prime, C prime labeled for your image. This is what you're going to do on your homework. I have several problems set up for you where I give you the pre-image and then you are going to flip your card to find your translation and then you're going to graph the image. Okay, that is your homework. As soon as you're done with that, you are good to go.